Hello and welcome to this little crash course about regular expressions in Go. I'm Christoph Berger and in this video I'll give you a short introduction to regular expressions. It is really just an introduction and it is just about regular expressions themselves, so I won't discuss the regex package here. The Go part here is that I use the regular expression syntax as Go understands it. You surely came across one or the other regular expression while coding. And if you are new to regular expressions, they might look to you like a mystic cipher or sometimes even like the result of someone's head banging on the keyboard. And you may have asked yourself, are those regular expressions useful at all? Are they worth the hassle? Let's face it, regular expressions have a bad reputation. People say they are unreadable, they are incomprehensible, they are slow, they are error prone. So, why are they used anyway? There are indeed a couple of advantages and use cases, like, for example, faster coding, especially in those cases where regular expressions can help avoiding large, horrendously nested if then else structures. Flexibility. The search pattern might not be known at compile time. Regular expressions provide a way to define a search pattern without programming. Standard syntax. Well, almost. There are different dialects in the wild, but the same underlying principles apply. Let's look into our first example. Here we have a rather silly string consisting of slightly different words. We have peach with uppercase p, then with lowercase p, then beach, reach, poach, roach, bleach, preach and each. And there's also some punctuation, a question mark and two full stops. It doesn't make any sense, but it's a nice test string for our first attempts. Let's start with a plain string to search for. Even a plain string is a regular expression, although you probably wouldn't want to use a regular expression to search for plain strings. But anyway, this is the most basic form of a regular expression, so let's start with this. We get a couple of matches in our test string, and note that the expression matches character by character, even within words. Now let's try our first special character. The dot is not a literal full stop. It has a special meaning. It says match any character. So in our search string, the expression p.ach matches peach and poach, since both the e and the o satisfy the pattern. Note that the dot matches everything, not just the characters of the alphabet. In this example, the dot matches a white space in our test text. Let's try another expression. Here we have bleach, but with a question mark after the L. The question mark says that the preceding element is optional. In this example, the preceding element is the character L. And this expression matches both beach and bleach. As a takeaway, some characters have a special meaning when used in a regular expression. In our example, we learned that a dot means match any character at my current position. And the question mark means the preceding item is optional. There are more characters of this kind and we'll learn about them later. What if you want to match a literal full stop or a question mark? To achieve this, you can remove the special meaning from that character. This is done by putting a backslash right before the special character. For example, this regular expression does not match each followed by any character. Rather, it only matches the string each followed by a literal full stop. This also works with a question mark and with other special characters as well. To summarize, adding a backslash in front of a special character removes the special meaning from that character. But this is not the only effect of the backslash. It also can help specifying characters that would be difficult to add to a regular expression otherwise. For example, at a first glance, a tab character can be indistinguishable from a sequence of spaces. 
So to make the tab character visible and unambiguous, you can use backslash T instead. Likewise, a new line character is described by backslash N. And if you need to match the backslash itself, simply use a double backslash. The takeaway for this section is, the escape character helps defining hard to type or hard to read characters. To specify a literal backslash, simply double it. Finally, a backslash can define specific character classes, as we will see in the next section. We learned that the dot operator matches any character. Now let's look at operators that allow us to be more specific about the characters to match. Backslash D, for example, matches all digits. In our search string, backslash D matches four times. Backslash S matches any white space character. This comes handy if you do not care if words are separated by spaces or by tabs or even by a new line character. Backslash S matches them all. In our search string, which followed by backslash S matches which plus the space, but not witches. Brackets allow to explicitly list the characters to search for. This expression says, match a W and then either an A or an I. And the matches in the search string include a WA and WI, but not WO or WH. Adding a caret right after the opening bracket means match all except the listed characters. This basically inverts the meaning of the brackets. As a result, the search expression matches only WO and WH in our search string. Last not least, there is a special syntax to define a range of characters. Here we match any uppercase letter. The only match here is the capital I. Similar expressions exist for lowercase letters and for numbers. They can even be merged together, like so, and this matches all alphanumeric characters. As a takeaway for this lesson, use escape sequences or bracket expressions to match specific sets of characters. Sometimes it is required to match a certain location in a string, without matching a specific character at that location. For this you can use location matches or zero width matches. To match the beginning of the search string, use a caret. We've already seen the caret as a negation sign within the bracket expression, but outside the brackets the meaning is completely different. The caret must occur at the beginning of the regular expression. In the example, we match only the first occurrence of red, that is right at the start of the string. Likewise, the dollar sign matches the end of the search string. Here, only the last occurrence of bread matches. To match the beginning or the end of a word, use backslash b. Backslash BA, for example, only matches the A at the beginning of the word AND, but not the other two A's in the text. Note that the backslash B has zero width, so it does not match the space preceding the word AND. As a conclusion, the location match or zero width match specifies a certain location within the search string. The previous chapter introduced a number of individual search expressions. Time to compose them into larger expressions. The first composition technique is concatenation. In fact, we have already seen examples of this. Our first expression, each, 
was in fact a concatenation of four individual expressions E, A, C and H. Concatenation has no special syntax, just line up all expressions in the desired order. Sometimes you want to match either of two expressions. For this use the OR operator, which is represented by a pipe symbol. A typical use case is to search for a set of words like color names. There are several ways of matching repetitive text. Probably the most common one is the asterisk. It means repeat the preceding expression zero one or more times. So this expression has three different matches in the search text. The plus sign is similar to the asterisk, except that it means one or more occurrences. As a result, it matches only two times in our text. Combining the dot operator with the asterisk operator allows to match an arbitrary number of arbitrary characters. This example matches a string that starts with the and ends with d and anything in between. Note that the match stops at the very last d. It could have stopped at the first occurrence of a d, but Go's regular expressions behave in a way that is called greedy. They always match the longest possible string. To change the behavior so that the expression matches the shortest possible string, simply add a question mark after the greedy operator. To summarize, regular expression operations can be composed through concatenation, alternatives and repetition patterns. Another composition technique is grouping. With parentheses you can group multiple expressions together. This group can then be used like a single expression. This expression matches either C or C shells. The question mark operator makes the whole group optional. Another use for groups is to limit the reach of the OR operator. Written like this, the expression matches U or all scream. Adding a group limits the OR operator to this group. Finally, a group can also generate submatches. Calling find all string submatch with an expression containing a group returns both the whole match and the matched group. Our takeaway for this lesson. Use parentheses to group elements. Groups can make multiple elements act like one, limit the reach of the OR operator and define separate submatches within an expression. Let's conclude this tutorial with a couple of helpful tips. Tip 1. Break long regular expressions into smaller ones. Find places where you can easily break the expression into smaller ones, like this OR operator in the middle of this backslash D parade. Assign the parts to separate variables and combine them to the final expression in your code. Not only are the smaller parts better to read, but you also can use the variable names to give the reader a hint about the purpose of each part. And don't save on helpful comments. Tip number two, avoid regular expressions for very simple tasks. Regular expressions are very versatile, but this comes at the cost of a slow matching algorithm. Use specific search algorithms if you can. Trimming leading and trailing spaces from a string, for example, does not require using regular expressions. Look into the strings and bytes packages to see the numerous methods that are available for searching and replacing. Or try to find a fast specialized algorithm for your purpose. Tip number three. Likewise, also avoid regular expressions for complex tasks. 
Although regular expressions are very flexible, they are limited in their expressiveness. Regular expressions cannot match nested brackets. That's simply because they cannot count the number of matches found so far. Regular expressions cannot parse higher level grammars, such as the grammar of a typical programming language. Regular expressions cannot do fuzzy searches, like searching for phonetically similar words or searching for words that might contain typos. In all those cases, you are better off using a specialized algorithm. To sum up, regular expressions are not that difficult once you know what the building blocks are and how they can be combined. However, regular expressions do have their limits and should be used wisely. You don't need them for very simple search patterns and if the search problem is too complex, they will come back and haunt you. Remember the saying that goes like, if you have a complex problem and try to solve it with regular expressions, then you have two problems. In this brief introduction, it was not possible to touch every detail of regular expressions, so let me share some useful resources for digging deeper. Your first stop should be the official syntax reference at golang.org slash package slash regexp slash syntax. Here you can read about all the operations that did not make it into this tutorial. Next, try some expressions for yourself. There are a couple of web pages for testing regular expressions in the browser. They're all great, but one of them is worth a closer look, as it lets you inspect various Go regular expression methods and their output. After selecting golang.org in the box at the top right corner, you can add a regular expression which I already pre-filled and a replacement string where I've put the, a checkbox icon. Below are a couple of fields for entering the input string and clicking on the test button opens the result page. At the top we see some information about the expression itself. After that comes the interesting part. Here we see the test string again, as well as the output of five methods from the regex package. The first is match string. That simply returns true if there was a match. The second one is replace all string, and here we can see that the checkbox icon has replaced all matches. The next is find all string. It returns a slice of all matches. Find all string index returns a slice of start and end indexes for each match. And finally, find all string submatch returns a slice containing a slice for each match together with the included submatches if any. So if you're in doubt whether a regex method works the way you expect, just do a quick test on this web app. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and happy coding.